is a special presentation of ABC Sports. Gentlemen, start your engines. this season and Paul Tracy who won this race in 1993 his first career win in the third row Scott Pruitt who made his first start in an IndyCar here in 1988 and Parker Johnstone who makes his best start ever on a road course row four Robbie Gordon who finished third here in 1994 and Greg Moore who earned his first podium finish with a third in Australia in the fifth row, Al Unser Jr., his six Long Beach wins have all come within the last eight years. And Christian Fittipaldi, who has three finishes in the top six this season. Row six, Mauricio Guzman, who finished fourth in Australia for his best result this year. And Michael Andretti, who scored his first career win here at Long Beach in 1986. In row seven, Adrian Fernandez and Emerson Fittipaldi. The eighth row, Andre Ribeiro and Raul Boisel. Row nine, Ryan Herta and Pupo Moreno. In the 10th row, Teo Bobby replacing the injured Mark Blundell and Stefan Johansson. In row 11, Bobby Rahal and Richie Hearn. The 12th row, Jeff Krosnoff and Eddie Lawson. Row 13, Hiro Mashashuda and Juan Fangio. And in row 14, Michelle Jourdain and Dennis Vitolo making his first start since the 1995 race opener in Miami. Here are the cars as they circle around the track. Let's take a look at the circuit here. Well, as you can see, it's pretty uh, long straightaways on both sides with two passing areas going into turn one and going into turn six. The trouble areas are three, seven, and a little bit of a sucker area. You think you can get by the car, but there's not enough room in there with a quick guy to pass. There's the uh, Toyota pace car leading them down. Here are the engines and the tires in this race, these combinations so absolutely critical at every race, but especially here where you move from asphalt to concrete back and forth. Here's a new camera view for you. That's right over the head of Michael Andretti. Looking right down in the cockpit, maybe we'll even get a little extra intelligence on what's happening on that dashboard with the help of Danny Sullivan. Now, as they come off here, they should go into their rows of two. The starter, Jim Swinpal, taking a good look as the front row lines up coming on.
to turn two. Chassis Paul Tracy battle for third. Scott Pruitt second in the points, and he's just behind. Jimmy Vance in the point battle. Here's Cooper right there in the third and fourth and fifth. Parker Johnstone steps right back behind Scott Pruitt. at all. 
for that team, Paul.
that battle between Greg Moore and Al Unser Jr. when we went away, and shortly thereafter, this happened. Yeah, Greg had a good run, came down that straightaway. He was obviously quick around those corners, made a good, clean pass on little Al, and Greg's really hooked up right now. Exactly what a Whippoorwill is on the rear wing. See this black lip? Runs along the trailing edge of the wing. Now, how 
do you change it with the belt? Real simple. Lift up the flag, slide it out, slide the new one back in during the pit stop, and you can change dramatically the handling characteristics. Gary? Yeah, probably have to move that hand up. I don't know. 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 I don't know.
cautioned him about the pit speed really for all the front runners to come in in the next two or three laps. But watch for him. Remember to go to the front wing. He'll make an adjustment. Now he's going to go up a turn to the top of the car on the front wing. Trying to side.
a result of this. Full course yellow. First full course yellow of the day. Lot water in the pits. Fortunately, it's over close to the wall. And for those of you who say properly so, don't throw water on an oil or gasoline tire. That's right. The fuel here is methanol. If you throw water on it, it dilutes it down below its combustion point. It's a great way to handle this fire. And two are looking for clear on it. He's getting back in. He wants to get back in with this yellow. Maybe he pulled away a hair too early. I don't know. In safety, they have to get him out. So he's going, no, no, I'm okay. I'm okay. But they want him out of the car in case the fire gets any worse. See, the hose is stuck. Yeah, they're trying struggling to pull. with it. Oh, I see what the problem is. He's just moved forward, probably tweaked it. He's got it jammed in the side there. They can't get it out, and it's just filling out enough fuel. And, of course, the engine is right behind that. It goes down onto the exhaust to some hot and ignites. If, uh, if you can see on the side of the car there, they built up the sides of the cockpit where Robbie's name is this year. Going back to the accident with Ray Hall, some of the guys, especially the people who work on the mirrors, say that they may have to work on how the mirrors are in the future because of that little blockage. You can't actually see how alongside the car like they used to be. That's right, but right in front of his name, you can see how it's cut down there, and uh, they've got to improve the mirrors properly. All right, you see the order we're under full course caution. The Baron made his stop. Jimmy Vassar came up into second place with the accident. So the unusual always happens here. Well, here's the way the PPG point standings are in the championship right now with Jimmy Vassar coming into this race, leading Scott Pruitt by a mere five points. And then a very tightly bunched group all the way down to the current race leader, Jill DeFerrin. So the points fight very definitely on here. And uh, as we've seen so many times, guys have been well behind at the midpoint of the season still come back to a championship. There's our Toyota pace car. By the way, the pace lap, we didn't get a chance to mention it, was driven by football great Walter Payton. Now we're back to uh, actually to the, uh, the uh, regular pace car drivers in the series who are professional drivers. So, and Supra out in front of the field. Now here's the accident with Ray Hall and Zanardi. They want to get as sleep as they can. They want to make those things hanging out by the mirror as small as possible. You see Robbie Gordon right there. Looks like they've made it bigger. And I also believe that Robbie has knocked the one on the left side off for it to skew. And he was trying to adjust it going out of pits. All right, let's go to Gary Jerry. Right there down the there. It was a 14 
second stop. They did add the get down course at the front end of the car. They gave him a regular book to make sure he got behind Teo Fabi on the track where he hit a black flag. They can fly that no problem. Others in this area, Greg Moore, the reason he dropped back early, had a look for a problem. They think they faced that all right. No chance for victory for the ball. Mike Henry also added to it. Jack, 16 seconds for Vassar. A wing adjustment for Scott Pruitt and Danny Sullivan. You're correct. They're going to bring Robbie Brooke to the next stop. They'll change that left side here. Yes, that's Christian. He's hot. Oh, Christian's furious. That Brazilian temper. I saw earlier the great wall in the corner previous went around the went around the outside of him. And I guess they didn't have room and they got up the other side. They come back, and oh, it looks like, uh, well, I thought Christian kind of cut in on him a little bit now there. Now watch, let's see. Now he tangled, now his wheel's out there. 
hits the wall there, and I think you'll see a wheel come off. Yeah, there it was. It'll go out and it'll sit in the track, and it looks like Emerson comes back alongside somebody else and runs over that wheel. And Christian goes on the truck. Room. Again, maybe a blind spot, and they just touch. Greg's got nowhere to go. The wall, the curb, everything's right there. Christian tries to turn in. Boom, they touch. Now let's see if we can watch out. as the rest of the cars come through, because we only got a glimpse of Emerson Fittipaldi as he came through here and got him to the debris from Christian's car. I think that's actually Greg Moore's tire sitting right out there on the track, almost by those two blind spots. Let's go down to Jack Roo. Let's see if we can get a first person account of that accident from Emerson Fittipaldi. You were involved. Well, Jack, I was just coming in on the corner when I saw the crash happen, and one of the wheels was on my on my way, and I, I couldn't avoid it. Just drove over the wheel and bent on the suspension. That's a shame. And you were just running your type of race. We were monitoring the radios, and you seemed very comfortable in the car, and it was going to be one of these where you thought the race would come to you. Uh, I'm sure it was going to happen. The car was good. The brakes were good. The engine was good. Everything was really good. And then your nephew was also involved. You probably didn't get a chance to see it, but we, he went over and not only had words, but I understand that maybe he had a little bit more than words with Greg Moore. Well, I don't know what happened. That's a shame what happened. You know, being out of the race, the fourth race now, that I hope we're right now on Nazareth, we're running strong and beat the end of the race. Well, well, you saw from the overhead video that Emerson Fittipaldi is pretty lucky to be there because he really smacked into that tire off of Greg Moore's car. Watch this as, as he comes through here. It'll be the red car coming down. The wheel assembly, not just the tire. Everything, that's heavy. It's got everything out there. See, you know, that's well, what threw him. The car in front of him moved right out of the way. Emerson never saw the wheel and ran right over it. That's a pity. Yeah, he was tucked in right behind the old boy cell. So we're under full course yellow. Here's the lineup as they are. And the Baron Bassers racing in Johnstone at the top. We'll be back after these messages from the ABC Stadium. You know, this week, we got a good view of what will be the California Speedway. Not far from here, Roger Penske. There is Bill Grants Jr. They were all part of it. That's what the site used to be. And here is what it will be by next year. One magnificent race track. Now, about that accident earlier, let's go down to Jackaroo. Let's check in with Greg Moore. Greg, give us your version of what happened out there. Well, Christian got slowed down in turn six, and I went around the outside of him, and I was, I, I was ahead of him coming out of the turn. Then we went side by side into seven, and you know, I had the inside line, and I guess he just didn't want to give it up. And you just you can't go side by side through that turn, and uh, you know, we just came together. He jumped in front of me a little bit, and we came together. It was just a racing accident. A little bit shocked what happened after the accident? Well, I guess he was just a little excited about the whole thing, and you know, we, we'll go into Nazareth right now. The whole player's force, I think, can win that race. And, no, it's too bad here because I think we had a good chance, but uh, no, it's too bad. Let's check in with Gary for the other side of the story. Well, here is the other side of the story. Christian Fittipaldi, we just heard from Greg Moore. What was your uh, situation here going into that turn? I think my situation was quite clear on the TV, and it was quite clear that I got hit by his front wheels on my rear wheels. So unfortunately, I think when that happens, it's not that we were racing, we were side by side. We went in the other corner side by side and there was absolutely no problem. But the second corner, I had a half a car advantage and he, I think he just forgot to brake and he ran into me and nailed me into the wall. Now what did you tell him when you went into it? It's simple, you can win the race in the first lap and you can never win the first lap. Now I'm 15 minutes to move and lots of races didn't happen a little bit too much wrapped up. And we already hear that there's a $5,000 fine for the preliminary ruling. Billy Campbell hasn't just turned the team. Well, Christian Pinapaldi and Greg Moore, both reasonable explanations. As we go back to green flag racing, you noticed on the front of the parents car, as they sort out in farm in the first turn here, a bit of a black mark. Where did that come from? Uh, I guess what happened was at the same time that Greg Moore 
Jimmy Gordon. Oh, Lon fell off the track, sorry. That's okay, locked him up, and uh, Jill hit him up, you know, the backside, and just, it doesn't look like it did any damage. Probably marked the nose cone, put some, uh, probably scrapes in it, but he seems to be running okay. There's Jimmy Vassar, he runs in second with Lon Tracy right behind him, Parker Johnston and Scott Roy. seen him much, merely for the fact that he pulled so far away so quick. Well, it's true, but, uh, you know, as we'll see it, uh, we never had a trouble with him. Yeah, Bobby Gordon was two laps down, and Bobby locked up. He touches him. He's still going to be able to get through the track, but you never know what's going to happen. We're going to be far away from somebody doing something. spot. Bobby, of course, wants a jump start. Of course, he's two laps down, but uh, sure he wants to get back into this race. And no one here goes. He's trying to get one of the starters. If he's here, he's going to set it up. Comes in, takes a look, goes inside, and Brian doesn't see him. Is that the visibility issue again? No, it's just one of those spots that you Sitting by the edge of the circuit, there's your leader, Doug Farron. His bright yellow Pennzoil car. And he is five seconds ahead of second place. Jeff Crosstown. He had a dream as a 13 year old when he first came to this street circuit and watched the Formula One cars. Now he's here driving. Unfortunately, a short day, Jeff. I know you had difficulty in the warm up this morning. Did that just continue then in the race? Right. I mean, the guys did a great job to get me back out for the start. Uh, unfortunately, it just didn't come right. Uh, we did our, gave it our best effort, but, you know, it was bigger than us today. A steep learning curve. Thank you very much. Well, great guy, though, Jeff Krasnoff. Has a band of IndyCar drivers we saw perform this weekend. And he didn't sound too bad on those drums, did he? So, Joe DeFerrin is the leader of the race. There's the smudge for Robbie Gordon's car on the nose. We'll be back after these messages. Long Beach, there's no question that Jim Hall, driver to the Baron, is in charge of this race with a five and a half second lead over Jimmy Vassar as we look at the interval leaderboard back to Al Lunger.
defend his title on the track at Nazareth. We'll join these drivers in Pennsylvania for the Fox Sport Club Grand Prix. The race begins at 2 Eastern, 1 Central Pacific, April 28th, right here on ABC Sports. We talked about the debris. Looks like it came off of Michaels. Yeah, that looks like Michaels' way. <laughs> yeah. Must have uh, run up underneath him. It looks like they're on the left side. You can see that piece pulling up. He uh, obviously got up underneath him, but he must not think it's too bad. Look at that ring flapping on the left side. Yeah, that's it. That thing flapping up and down. Right in the front of the ring. I don't want to know what the rest of them think of that one. Yeah, looks like it's going to be a strong black flag. But also, Tim's got that up. Viewpoint to shreds that oh. front leg. And I'm looking out the window here from the booth, and I can see that Michael's guys are kind of standing around waiting in case he wants to come in. Let's go to the pits and Gary. Quick report on Raul Boisel just left the pits back on circuit for the Bama Sports team. We talked about brakes and how they can be a problem. Well, he obviously had a braking problem, and then you understand now he's off the circuit. They were bleeding the brakes. They Send it back out, but obviously things not going well for Raul, who's best finished this year with seventh down in South America. Yeah, just take a look real quick on his left foot. You can see the blisters on there. But the uh, on the problems is walking it out. And the good is you can place him on that great run. Jimmy Masser, the points leader. As we've got a new well tail, Bobby is result of that confrontation as he does with that back. Exactly. When he shredded that, he obviously tore up the start. Now he's got a long to go. He's just past the second third turn. He's got a long way to go for that time to fall off as it is right now. And he's going to be lucky to get it back with great suspension. Mateo Fabi has to work his way back to the pit and be very careful to hope that that rubber doesn't bounce around and rip the rest of the car up. He was running 10th before he got into this situation. And taking a look backwards from Parker Johnstone on that's Al Hunter Jr. Jason, and nothing's changed at the front. It's the Barrett still in the lead. But uh, we've got a couple of cars with some interesting problems. We'll start with Jack Aru. And let's start with Scott Fruitt, who's running in the top five. They reported a header problem. It seems the header is broken on the Ford Cosworth engine. And they'll try to make some hasty repairs. They've lifted at the bonnet, but this will definitely take Scott Fruitt out of contention. And they're going to make the changes now on the electronics of it. We're going to try and restart the motor. Oh. Well, so some hard work. It's a very dangerous work because of the header temperature. Those gloves help, but not all that much. And of course, he was up in the top five. So what that means now is the Baron is still the leader, followed by Bassett. But Tracy is third. Parker Johnson is fourth. And Al Hunter Jr. is fifth. Look at one other thing. Oh, there's Robbie Gordon. He looks like he's walking up and down speed. He's having a wild day. I'll tell you what, he's been everywhere. Of course, it's a desperate drive when you go two laps down. That's right. He's trying to make himself come from nothing. He's uh, trying to get him to push him back. The car doesn't look bad. The nose still seems to be intact, but he's trying to get him to push him back. All right, let's get an update on Scott Pruitt, Jack. Well, you can hear Scott Pruitt in the background. He tried to put the car in gear, and he stalled it. But they are going to restart it and send Scott Pruitt back out. There goes the auxiliary, the electrical starter. The only way you can start these engines, you don't want to push it real hard. Spot. So we're probably going to get some pits 
stops here. All right, so Ruby Gordon in a precarious position down the first turn. Full course, yellow third one of the day. Scott Pruitt makes it back into the fight. The leader at halfway has gone on to win in 10 out of 12 races at Long Beach. And of course, that's Bill DeParent, who now heads on down into the pits for his pit stop. Here's Gary. Well, the first stop was executed in 14 seconds, and there was drama that forced us to leave that stop. Everything looks great for Jim Lowell's team. We watch and we listen. They made a wing change on the first stop. Nothing this time. They got him under 13 seconds. Boy, great job by that team, and they know it, too. And, of course, you see that red car that's coming down the pit lane behind them. Of course, it's Jimmy Bastard. The same could not be said for Team Penske. Paul Tracy came in, stalled the car, refired it, put the tires up, and actually hit a tire that hit Richard Buck's crewman on Ellenser Jr.'s car. One of the full court is yellow. Bill DeBaron is the leader. Still some debris to clean up and watch. We'll be back after these messages and a word from our ABC station. Well, Robbie Gordon has made it back into the pits after he had a situation and uh, brought out a full court yellow, and here it is, Danny. Six, critical braking area in there deep. Whoa, he's locked him up. He couldn't make it around. Good, but we saw him in the pits. Damage the nose. Look, he's going back out. He lost probably another lap. A record breaking weekend here as we look down and we go back to green flag racing. Down up here and leads it for Gracie has managed to move up into second place. Faster third. Johnstone, fourth Allen Jr. And a very about that pass. Let's see. You're saying the pass was under the yellow. Well, Jimmy, we saw it. I don't know. And that's it, guys. We're watching TV here now to decide what they should do. And also, conversations go on between player owner Tip Ganassi. Uh, there's one of the entire safety vehicles out on the circuit. So yellow in this area. And uh, Jimmy Vassar stays in pursuit. I'm not sure what they were out after. I didn't see the yellow flag, and then I saw that fire. And Jimmy's in for a slow when he went ahead and passed it. So I don't believe there was a yellow in that car. Uh, I can't really tell you from this angle what's going on. And once again, in a very short interval, the Baron is able to get four seconds ahead of Paul Tracy. But Paul Tracy, there he is, has got a real serious problem. The argument apparently was because they're going to bring Tracy in under the black flag for passing Jimmy Vassar under the yellow. And obviously, very clear, they don't make that call right. Oh, Tracy should see the black flag as he comes down this time. And then he'll have three laps under the rules to answer that flag. Well, I tell you, as a race car driver, and I can show that black flag on the Watch your way back up the second spot. Spun the car. That's the last thing you want to see. It's the most frustrating thing.
Stone. Two battles with Allinger Jr. Coming down on top of him. Still not in a position to actually move on the path. Maybe by the time they get around the backside of the court, he will be. said not only did they change just the compound, they also changed the construction. It's been something they worked on. They didn't want to bring it out, as we said earlier, this soon, but they needed to because the Firestone was clearly a favorite. Billy Bowser, the points leader in a catch-up mode on to Barron now, as he is just the absolute commander of the run here. At bright yellow Kim Hall car. by Parker Johnstone, then Al Unger Jr. right to the point player, then Adrian Fernandez, Paul Tracy, Mike Lambrini, and Hugo Moreno. Now DeFerrin's having fun here. How about some fun with his family at uh, Disneyland earlier in the week. It's not far from the track here. A lot of the guys head over to it. It's a little visit from Minnie Mouse. Remember the baby in Winter Circle at the end of last year? We're back in the Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach. Here's the leader of the race. Now we're looking for Jimmy Bass, red and yellow. 
trouble a couple of times today. Yeah. Because he got tangled up with Michael earlier. You just saw him turn right in there. That's the back door. In the that means he's got a big problem. His face probably goes out. And now on board, the points leader coming into this event, currently running second, seven seconds ahead, about half a straight away on the uh, pit straight four line drive here. Not to necessarily divert your attention from the ago when this thing started they weren't there and many of the people here in the city attribute this event to the growth of long ocean and the growth of the city i hate to admit it but i was actually here 21 years ago there's richie hurt the 44 car boy what a great run he's had television down there. <laughs> Brian Lyles gives you away, one of the engineers. Now, boy, do you feel self-conscious now, guys? <laughs> and Christian Fittipaldi, of course, he's out of the race. Hey, Christian, come on, a little smile. A little smile. Ah, the dance is going to do nice. I think it's going to take a while to put a smile back on his face. If you've been knocked out of the race, uh, you're not real happy, especially when it was going as well as it was going. Maybe he's just thinking saying about me now. Could have been that audio there. Gil DeFerrin leads by 8.1 seconds. Boy, I'll tell you what, you talk about handling up a race. I don't remember this kind of dominance. No, and you know, something else he's going to come away with if he keeps going the way it is. And I'm not trying to jinx him or anything there, but if he keeps going, he'll come away with the maximum points. Pole position, pole spot. That's what we uh, what used to call clean, clean sweep. Exactly. And it's very profitable as well. It is. Let me tell you something. Having a world championship, those pole positions and those most likely those one point, the more of those you get really make a difference at the end of the season. And all the guys that tend to run back in the field act like that doesn't matter that much. But I've never talked to a champion like yourself. That is like, well, I've got to get that one point because one point's really add up. Right. The year I did it, I, I had uh, nine or ten poles. That's ten points. That means you got to finish, what is that, fifth or something to get those ten points? Or that's 32 points at the end of the season. That's, that's right. more than a race. Let's go to Jack. Well, let's ask a former driver his impressions of this Long Beach Road course. Yes, this is Anthony Edwards, one of the stars of the HRER. Who drove here in the What are your impressions of the Long Beach course? Uh, actually, I'm, I'm about ready to suit up in case Paul wants me to take over for him. Uh, I had a blast here last year. It was a lot of fun. What are your impressions of motor sports as a discipline? Because I know acting is difficult. from me are for me. Race of the 
be a brand new sponsor. And one that he hopes to see all the 97 with. He stayed in there. And Robbie Gordon, who has been in and out of trouble the entire day. But they're 
their eyes are glued to a TV monitor right now. The triumvirate of Bo Dunn in the red, and then Chip Ganassi on the outside, and in between Joe Montana. Two, two, well, I'd say tackles trying to, trying to cover the quarterback right now. They don't want to talk. They want to see the challenge. about this. He's been through it once. Takes over the lead. The Ferret falls out with just four laps to go. And Jimmy Vassar will see the white flag as he comes flying down Shoreline Drive. Three races in a four-race season. Is this guy and this team powerful? Jimmy Vassar is through turn one, two, three. Sits back three and a half seconds. Now, but Jimmy's going to drive very conservatively. He's got a long day. He's got a long day the picture. He's always stayed right there, second or third. He's going to get those points. But, but look at that. Look at there's Parker. He's the Parker's charging in there. And of course, Bo walks in. And of course, don't forget, he's got Al Hunter Jr. right there behind him. So he can't afford to make a mistake. And uh, he can't be too conservative. Final turn for Jimmy Vassar. Jimmy Vassar getting the congratulations of his crew. So much paraphernalia to take off of the driver. The helmet, the radios, but now he can hear the congratulations. A three feet and 22 points ahead in the point standings for the championship, Jimmy. Wow, it's great. You know, today is a great day for our team in the, in the road to the championship because uh, we didn't have the car to win the race today, but uh, we had a good car, and I feel bad for my teammate Alex, who's had a great, great race going, and, uh, and obviously DeBaron, who had the thing handily. But uh, I just thought, it, you know, I couldn't catch him, so I was going to take care of my equipment and hope something happened to him, and, and my prayers came answered. How much patience does it take when you know maybe you don't have the best car, and it's going to take some bad luck to put you in victory lane? Well, it takes it takes a lot of patience, you know, and uh, you just gotta you gotta mind your p's and q's. But I guess you know that's what that's racing, and uh, today we got lucky. And uh, sometimes they say you'd rather be lucky than good. And, Today we were good and, uh, and lucky, so you know that's why we won. The point standing so important. You lead by 22. Do you begin to think about the championship in terms of how you prepare for a race? No, oh, absolutely not. You know, uh, the championship obviously is a goal going into the season, but you got to take it one race at a time. I think if you start thinking too far ahead of yourself, you might start making mistakes. Which one's the best victory so far in the three? The last one. This one. Well, let's go to Gary Gerald first. Jack, normally you see the greatest display of emotion with the winner. Jimmy Vassar is now an all-time hand. I guarantee you, Parker Johnstone is the happiest guy in Long Beach. I think for the first time in my career, I'm speechless. This I team, can't believe that. <laughs> this small team has done fantastic things. I thank God for this day and all these guys at Comtech Motorola. 
Honda and Firestone. It's tremendous. Thanks, guys. Back in the early 1980s, the late 70s, he and his now wife, Sharon, came to Long Beach. They had a dream. And now you can see the emotion of this moment. Doug Peterson in the embrace, the tears come from Parker Johnstone. Parker, tell us about what it's been like to live this dream because you came here with Sharon more than 15 years ago. Looking forward to a day when you might be able to enjoy this moment. Well, like any, any fan, we came down here because this was the Mecca Motor Racing with Formula One. Then when it became uh, Al's place, which wasn't lost on me when he was behind me all those laps, to finally get a chance to drive here is just a fulfillment of a, a lifelong dream from coming from a working class family, having the support of all these guys uh, through the thick and thin of the last few years and to finally get here. I mean, there, there's some very specific people I need to thank, like Tom Elliott at Honda, all the guys at Firestone, Harry Bricks, Doug Peterson, Don Herb. Holy moly, for us, this is, this is enormous. <laughs> this guy's gonna float for a while. Enjoy it. Thanks, fans. Jack? All right, Parker. Well, what can be said? The emotions. Sam, the same just kind of thing happened. When did you have an indication? We heard you misfiring coming down the front straightaway. Just a handful of laps to go. It was all of a sudden. I mean, it was, it was just a sudden. It was a sudden uh, problem in the engine. There was no indication at all. Everything was everything was running smoothly. It's a shame, but I guess this kind of thing happened. Well, you can tell he's emotionally distraught. And the toughest part is Brazilian TV is here, and now he has to explain it to his countrymen. Paul? No, a terrible day for DeFerrin, who almost had it done. Alan Sir Jr. also with a super finish, but not king of the beach, Gary. Well, the man who has ruled the streets so many years, a gallant job to end up here on the podium after starting back there in ninth position. How tough was this day for you? Well, it was a pretty tough day, you know, we, uh, uh, the Marlboro car ran great. I started with a little bit too much downforce and I took the downforce out of it and uh, ended up almost going right off the first couple times under braking, but I adjusted my bias and, uh, and got my braking down good. And so, uh, you know, it just went from there. Thank you, Al. Paul, I'd like to. All right, and Parker Johnstone shows that victory is not always defined by first place. Well, Jimmy Vassar unofficially takes the win, followed by Jonestone Hunter Jr. Paul Tracy. Bill DeFerrin manages a fifth. Don't forget, in two weeks here on ABC Sports, it's Emerson Fittipaldi. He'll try to defend his title on the track at Nazareth in the Bosch Spark Plug Grand Prix. Make sure you're there for that. Well, did I tell you that Long Beach was happening? No question about it. That's Parker Johnstone's first podium. Paul Tracy's first finish of the year and Adrian Fernandez and Moreno's best finish of the year as they now take their victory ride around the track here. And Scott Pruitt, well, he's uh, 23 points behind Jimmy Vassar. So we'll see you in two weeks for the Bosch Spark Plug Grand Prix. So long from Long Beach. Look at this. Parker Johnson, a former cheerleader.